who were the players, Mr. Hall, who were invited but were not able to make it, and who were the replacements? Well, I mean, you can see the replacements in the squad. But um, you've got, you know, Adrian Mariapa was, was invited, Andre Gray was invited, Ravel. Like I said, they, they were all invited but not able to make it. I wanted to get the squad as close to the winning team as we got last month. A, a few of those players had different reasons why they couldn't come and I had to respect that and I had to then replace different players. This just gives those players who have replaced them a chance to be able to show are they good enough you know, there's a, a, a section of probably certain members of the, the media who probably not believe in those players. But my job is not to not believe in them. My job is to believe in them, give them the, the, the chance and the exposure to be able to step into people's shoes when they're absent and to be able to make Jamaica's pool a stronger pool. And, and, and this is a, an opportunity for those players to be to, to show themselves. So that's my team talk go out and prove the doubts is wrong. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Good morning, one and all. Coach Hall, good morning to you as well. Good morning. So uh, my question is, it's to piggyback on what was just asked. In terms of players, right, because I know you're very big on the commitment of persons representing the national team. Uh, yeah. What, what constitutes a reasonable excuse to not be available in your estimation and when you call in a player when one player says I'm not available for whatever reason a player comes in maybe a local player from somewhere else and performs how do you manage that in terms of the player who may have turned down the call for whatever reason um, but I'll hold you that not yet. Hold on, Paul. Hold on, Paul. There, there are a few of us who need to turn their mics off. Wade Brown, Sean Grant, Alric, please turn it Sean Grant, Alric, please turn the mic off. Sean Grant, please turn the mic off. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah. I am. I am sure. Could you, could you, could you, could you um, repeat the question? Okay. So the question is, what constitute yeah. what constitute a reasonable excuse to turn down a, a call up in in a FIFA designated window and competition for a particular player? And the other side of that is, when you as a coach now uh, call someone else. That player performs reasonable in your estimation. What happens in a case like that to the player who initially um, turned on the call, though he's probably playing at a higher level than the player that you call to replace him? Good, great question. Great question. Like I said, um, there were three players uh, that I know of. Right when I was playing myself, Fitzroy Simpson, Dion Burton, who came, and we were really, really, and I'm talking really committed. There's not an excuse that could have happened to, to, to be able to stop us. Maybe, maybe, um, you know, something, uh, health or family. You know, I really do believe family comes first. And so if there's a family ex uh, reason, then fine. Some of the reasons that I've been given say to me that some players aren't committed because th those reasons you wouldn't that those reasons they wouldn't give to their 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 their, their, club, their clubs they they would never give to their clubs and those and those reasons wouldn't be expected um, accepted so for me a reasonable excuse would be one where it's affecting family or where it, it affects health because this is an, a, a call to your national football team you are now getting your call to arms to represent your country and i'm really particular about that and it doesn't matter who you are if you cannot come for a reason uh, that 
I feel is acceptable, then you're allowing yourself to be left open to somebody coming in, playing better, and you having to sit on the bench. It's the it's the it's the uh, the law of this is the natural law of life. If you let somebody, if you're playing really well, you keep that person on the bench. If you are not playing well and the person from the bench comes onto your comes onto the pitch and plays really well, now you're allowing that person to come in, in into the and do and do much better. Whether you're playing at a high level or not, I've seen players play in the top leagues for their country but not be able to play. Sorry, top leagues for their teams and not be able to play for their countries. And I've seen players in lower levels and be able to play for their countries. It's not about who's playing at a higher level. It's about who's committed. Because when we go and play against El Salvador, Mexico, it doesn't matter. They are playing for their country. They put their country first. And you can see it the way they sing the national anthem. You can see it the way how they come in, in you know, it doesn't matter what happens, they're playing for their country at call. So that's the only reason why I I protect it so much. You know, people will say, well, you can call him, you know, he might have had a good reason. Yes, he might have had a good reason, and I have to take that into consideration. But some of the reasons that I've been given, saying no names and saying no reasons, have quite frankly not been good enough. And I will protect, as long as I'm in this job, I will protect the dignity and integrity of this job by picking players who are committed to the cause. And it's as simple as that. All right. And then just to follow up on that, and then I'll close. On the flip side, a very great answer saying that is acceptable. And I do agree that you have to make that decision and players should turn up no matter what, unless it's family or injuries. That, that mm. I agree with. And, and mm. I know in some occasions, uh, we have been told that the clubs may give them a difficult time. So maybe that's a good reason. But on the flip but, side... Is, let me uh, answer that one. Because let me answer that one. I'm sorry to cut across to you. But 20 years ago, 23 years ago, and, and I don't even have to speak to Fitzroy, and I don't have to speak to Dion or Marcus Gale, or Frank Sinclair. The same clubs were giving us the same problems, and the, the, the same clubs, or, or the same sets of clubs, were, there was no window then, there was no window. So when we were called, we went, and we'd come back to a, a backlash from our clubs and the fans. So I'm not saying that other people must do that, but the clubs have got a need, but Jamaica have a need. And I always say, well, if Jamaica's, if the club have got the need, I've got the same need. We have the same need as your football club. But yet, yes, that's your bread and butter, but you will get 46 chances to represent your football club or 38 chances, depending on what league you play. With Jamaica, I played at the highest level with Jamaica and I only played 41 games. These games come few and far between. So for me, it's much more special to be pulling on those colours and representing your country because it may not happen that many times. Yeah, yeah good response. All right, so let me just finish, right? So on the flip side, when it comes on to the local players, I know that you are probably engaged, spending more time looking at the players in Europe and in England because that's where you're predominantly located. And so I suspect that there must be, and this is a question, and, and uh, right that the coaching staff locally assistant coach may help you in terms of looking through the local leagues for players uh but, 100%. but right so we are at we are at most of the games and i don't see a lot of members of the coaching staff and on television or, or tv and camera angles don't present the best picture to evaluate players performance now could that lead to questionable call up in terms of the players who are called from the local leagues if they're not actually at the game looking at the player before they are selected and case in point no. um mm. without calling names please 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 uh i am sure sport uh, let, let the coach let the coach answer we we, we we have a time limit as well let's, okay. let's go all right go ahead, go go ahead. ahead coach. thank you and that's it Okay, so um, whenever I'm in Jamaica, you see me. At, you see me at the games, and I made sure the last time I was there, uh, I, I watched 
almost eight hours. I watched every game and I saw every single player. But I don't believe that you can watch one game and, and, and decide. And I always will make sure that I watch on Sportsmax. Sorry to plug that, but um, I watch on Sportsmax the, the, the Premier League as much as possible. Yes, I am reliant on my staff to know the leagues, uh, and which is the, the important reason why they're here. They need to know the leagues and they need to know different players. And a lot of the time I do call on, because I'm very, very, very uh, pro Jamaica Premier League players and local players and young players being called into the squad. Very pro that because, again, outside of these, outside of these windows, these international windows, and um, players can't come for whatever reason. Clubs putting them under pressure, illness, whatever reasons they want to use. We have to get these players up to speed to be able to play and represent us in the best possible way. So it is key that my my assistant and my coaches and my recruitment team understand that we that what I want and how I want to play and can we look at players because the player playing well isn't necessarily going to be called into the national team we want them to be able to be able to to handle certain things to play a certain way and to make sure that they understand and the, the recruitment team understand who we can bring into the team who's got a ceiling to be able to improve under the, how we want to play. Um, good day to everybody, good day, and I'm um, wishing Jaffa Paul Hall all the best in the upcoming Nations League fixtures. For starters, I want to ask this question. Jaffa, every time I hear you do interviews or do a press conference, the word commitment arises. Jaffa, in your humble opinion, do you believe that this Reggae Boys team has a commitment issue? Um, what a good question. No, I don't believe they've got a commitment issue. I believe there are individuals with commitment issues, but that's my job to paint of what it what it means. To play. Uh, I didn't I didn't leave a legacy for some people to just pop and turn up and not be mentally here. Uh, there, there are there are, are those with you know the, the picture needs to be painted and, and everybody needs to be able to commit it because commitment is an action it's not a, it's not a, it's a word but it's, a, it's not. and for me it, people's actions will tell whether they're committed or not so if I say to a player um, if a player says to me I don't want to play this game. And I'll say why, and that player is probably that they're not committed. Not in this position until I'm removed. Players will probably not be invited back. I can't, and I'm not. That's that's not a warning. That's just the way how I feel. It's in the integrity, making Jamaica cool. So. I, I really just I really do believe that the, the, there's the whole squad is committed. I can see them the commitment. There's lots of examples of commitment. You can see who's committed. But again, for me, if if a club was to put me under pressure, I've been living in a club a club me when I was playing in England and they put me under pressure, my first thing was I'm going. I'm going. Now, that was when we didn't have a chance, and it was when we did have a chance to go to the World Cup. I've always gone and never invited, and for me, that's one of the things. So, commitment is a big, big, big word because we've got everything else. We have everything else in our arsenal to be able to go and be competitive with everybody, right? I think we just need to be better um, in certain areas at, at commitment. And I don't pull no punches when I say that. And I, and I really, really, really want people to understand that. All right. So just my follow up quickly to the question I asked and then another question. Um, 
Giaffa, you said you believe that some yeah. of the, the players have commitment issues. In your humble opinion, what do you think could be the reason for these commitment issues from some of these players? Um, listen, this is not all players. I'm not saying all players. There are a few who I would believe that when you know they 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 will put their listen I'm a different animal so I never ever put my club foot my front never and sometimes there might be like I said to you before there are some reasons I've been given for people not turning up I've suggested that there is a commitment issue with with a few people. Yes, man. Um, good morning, everyone. Sorry for the noise in the background. Um, Coach Paula, greetings to you, sir. I just want to point out um, the, 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 your selection um, criteria because initially yes. when you did your first press conference, you highlighted some stuff like player performance, regular in team, and all of these things. And um, based on what we have seen in this team right now, it's kind of a bit different from what you said initially. So could you um, outline some of the stuff that um, you go about? Just remind me of what you said. Of what you said that I said, please. Again, I didn't okay. hear. That. I don't. I don't remember. I have it written down, but I, I can't go where it is right now. But you mentioned players have to be playing regularly. Commitment. There is a few stuff that you you made mention. Right, and on often, but I know that you made mention of players playing regularly, players have to be committed to the cause and so forth. Yeah, so could you um, explain um, the, the, the criteria if it has changed, um, in terms of how you select the, the players? No, okay, so I think, um, for the Catalonia game, the Catalonia game was. A game where I wanted to select players who, you know, generate interest from the top talent in the world. We've got um, Amari Hutchinson, probably one of the world's best players for his age. He wants to play for Jamaica, uh, and there are other players in England off the back of that that want to play. So I double job. I've got to make sure that I want to attract the very, very best players because I want the same players. Uh, who can who can play dual nationality as what England do and as what Wales do? They've been doing this for too long, and I want to become aggressive in that market and bring players in. Uh, with regards to selecting selecting a squad, this is this is the way how I want to do it. You've got 16 players who are senior. I put pressure on those players to win games of football, which then means I can pick another seven players who can come in and who can learn and who can, if they're not ready, I can pick those young, I can pick those young players, but I pick 16 players who are under pressure to learn, to, to, to win games of football. So they may come, that will come in, in your Shamars, your uh, Ravels, your Speedies. These players are under pressure, senior players, young players who are broken into the first team, 16 players and that way i can call the other seven and i can succession plan and i can start to bring through some other youngsters or players who come up in jamaica who may need to adjust to the to the level and make sure that they can get the chance and some exposure but those 16 players are under pressure to win the games of football now when i call up a squad in in all i in all first, I can call a squad of players, but then one player say, I can't make it because of this reason. I can't make it because of that reason. I'm getting married. I'm having a baby. I'm doing this. I then have to call somebody else. So now the consistency of what I, I originally planned, I, I can't be as consistent with the selection process. So there are many reasons why players don't come. But again, the, the last team that won in against the, 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 the last game that we won was were, were picked. Every
every single last one of them were picked. Uh, Greg Lee, um, Ravel, that they were all picked because I believed in giving them a second chance. When they turned around to me and they said they can't come for whatever reason, I now have to pick somebody else. So there goes your consistency. So, yeah, I, I still mean what I say. And I've still got a, a genuine plan going forward. How uh, uh, sometimes players that can't come have to be replaced by other players. Hello? Yeah, yeah. It's, yes, it's, 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 as a follow up to that coach, in terms yeah. of um, the, 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 the 16 that you put pressure on, are, mm -hmm. is that a set number and also based on what I'm gathering from you, is that the seven that would be selected based on um, their availability, that would be a, a rotational seven, or does that rotation include the 16 that you'd be putting pressure on? Mm. Well, like I said, the 16 uh, are, 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 are an experienced, will be an experienced group. Because as we move, we still need to try to see if we can win games of football and to keep our, our, our rankings and things like that. So, yes, I would like to replace a, one of the 16 with somebody of equal or greater um, strength. And then the seven, yes, we could rotate them. Or, you know, that, that's, a, that's pretty much a development group where I could still rely on them if I, if I need them. But that group is not under that much pressure to, you know, they're under the pressure to get into the 16. And, and, and once you... You don't need any more than 16 players to to make sure that you can win a game of football. 22, 23 players. Yes, it is. It, it, that's comfortable. But we've got a, we've got our own story, and we need to forward, and we need a succession plan. And to succession plan, you need to be able to bring through players who either a didn't haven't had a chance. Or B are young players who we need to get them ready for 2026 campaign. It's really, really and, and experience the bit next to those those squad of 16 who probably are all playing in, in European football or American football or or English football and can really make sure that they learn from those guys and create the environment that they they really want to to get into the first.